Welcome to this video. I'm very pleased to bring you the Marian apparition of Hrushchev. And it's a remarkable Marian apparition, one that most people do not know about, or if they do know something about it, they don't know all the details of what makes this such an astounding apparition. And it's one that I believe is apocalyptic in its substance as well. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the background of Rushev is almost as remarkable as the messages themselves. The messages actually have come true in many cases, and we'll look at those. And when you see the messages, you'll see its correspondence to Fatima, and also how accurate that these messages are. The other astounding aspect of it is the remarkable number of people who have seen our Blessed Mother there. Unlike at other apparitions where only the seers would see her, everyone who was present saw our Blessed Mother, and the number was a significant one. 500,000 is the estimate. Thousands of people would go there every day to see her. And it's very much like the apparition of Zaytun in Egypt, where everyone present saw our Blessed Mother. So the background is very interesting. And the major apparition started in 1914. And then there weren't any until 1987. So just in those dates, you can see the historical implications of those dates. In 1914, three years before Fatima and the Bolshevik, the Bolshevik Revolution. And also in 1987, three years after Pope John Paul II consecrated the world to our Blessed Mother, and four years before the dissolution of Russia. So Hrushchev is in Ukraine, and a very interesting location. It's on the border of Ukraine and Catholic Poland. Before the initial apparition that we'll speak of, where she gave messages, there was also another apparition of our Blessed Mother in 1855 in Hrushchev, and it was during a cholera epidemic there, where there were many people dying. And our Blessed Mother told the people of the town to venerate her in a certain area. And after they did so, there were no other additional people who died of cholera in that location. So our Blessed Mother was basically setting the stage for what would come later and also indicating that Russia was a very important place in regards to marrying apparitions. The, the way it, it's been termed is that it's been approved locally. Now, I'm not sure what that means. I want to be per perfectly upfront with that. Uh, normally, in the Roman Catholic methodology for approving apparitions, the local bishop would approve them, and after a lengthy investigation, but I'm not sure what it means here, the church was actually a small, very small, humble, orthodox church of the Holy Trinity, and it was used primarily by Greek Catholics that lived in Hrushchev. So it's a very interesting mix there. And I'm not sure how they determined that it was approved locally. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of the status. But once you see the messages, <laughs> you, I, th I think, will be very comfortable in that this appears to be a valid apparition, a true apparition of our Blessed Mother. So the other part I'd like to mention before we get into the messages is that in 1914, 
what we discussed previously in another video about the end times and the coming era of the divine will, we talked about the 100 years that were promised to the devil from the vision that Pope Leo XIII saw. And we were talking about when that 100 years would start. Because it doesn't necessarily mean it starts in 1884 when the vision occurred. And we were postulating for various reasons that it was started in 1914. Well, this is when this apparition occurred in 1914, the first one that provided messages. And of course, that 100-year period coincides with the end of the pontificate of Pope Benedict. So let us begin by looking at the apparitions themselves and the messages. So I mentioned that the apparitions provided messages in 1914 and in 1987. This first one is from 1914. And I'm taking this from EWTN's website, if you'd like to do some investigation on your own. I have come on purpose to thank the Ukrainian people because you have suffered most for the Church of Christ. And listen to this message. And this is in 1914. There will be a war. Russia will become a godless country. Ukraine as a nation will suffer terribly for 80 years and will have to live through the world wars, but will be free afterwards. So here she's saying in 1914, she's prophesizing that Russia will become a godless country and the Bolshevik revolution started shortly after that. And that Ukraine would live through the world wars, which did not occur yet. So this is obviously a prophecy that became true. And also that Ukraine will be free afterwards, which has also come true. This takes us to 1987 apparitions. And there are more messages. And they're very interesting. And she starts off with her first message. I have come on purpose to thank the Ukrainian people because you have suffered most for the church in the last 70 years. And I've come to comfort you and to tell you that your suffering will soon come to an end. Ukraine will become an independent state. Now, in 1987, no one would believe this to be true. And in 1991, the dissolution of the Soviet Union, just four years later, Ukraine indeed became independent. Also, she mentions Chernobyl, <clears throat> which is also in Ukraine. Do not forget those who have died in the Chernobyl disaster. Chernobyl is a reminder and a sign for the whole world. And in another message, this is a very important message for these times. Forgive your enemies. Through you, the blood of martyrs will come the conversion of Russia. Repent and love one another. The times are coming which have been foretold as being those in the end times. And what are the keys that our Blessed Mother is speaking of here, keys to peace, is forgiveness. And with all of the travails that the Ukrainian people have gone through, in our current time and also in the past, as a reminder, Ukraine was the Soviets, they committed a tremendous crime against Ukraine, where they starved millions of people, millions of people died in Ukraine because of the tactics they employed to subjugate them. 
If the Ukrainian people can ever forgive Russia, can God do any less? And the forgiveness of Ukrainian people, and perhaps the peace between Ukraine and Russia, may bring on its full conversion, the full conversion of Russia. And another message, see the desolation which surrounds the world, the sin, the sloth, the genocide. Pray for Russia. Oppression and wars continue to occupy the minds and hearts of many people. Russia, despite everything, continues to deny my son. Russia rejects real life and continues to live in darkness. If there's not a return to Christianity in Russia, there will be a third world war. The whole world will face ruin. I'd like to speak to that a little bit. So I mentioned a few times where Russia does definitely appear to be embracing its orthodox Christian faith once again. And they've thrown off the shackles of Soviet atheism. However, they're not perfect at all. Now, it is true that if you do comparisons between the East and the West, you could see in Russia, they have much more vocations in the seminary, as opposed to looking what our, at what our seminaries look like. And also, you see the state actually supporting their religion, where they are rebuilding some churches that were demolished by the Soviets. And I, I'm using those terms deliberately. So there's, there's a big difference between the Soviets and Russia. And before I move on to the last message, I'd like to also mention that another aspect of the apparitions in Rushev was that, and this was in 87, so the Soviets were still dominant there. They tried to suppress the people. They tried, and of course, the religion was already suppressed, but because of the gatherings and because of why the gatherings were occurring, they were trying to suppress the people there. And they could not do it. One, because of the number of people I mentioned close to 500,000 seeing the apparitions. Also, the people that they sent, very much like at Fatima, the people that they sent to actually suppress them, they also seen the apparition. Just like at Fatima, they seen the miracle. So they were also affected, and they could not employ the tactics that the Soviet government wished to them to employ. So they were affected, and they allowed the gatherings to occur, much to the displeasure of the Soviets, the Soviet government. And they actually allowed mass to occur there, where the priests came out of hiding, and they had as many as 10 masses a day there in this little church. So one more important message, and it's one that you would expect to hear. Teach the children to pray. Teach them to live in truth and live yourselves in truth. Say the rosary. It is the weapon against Satan. He fears the rosary. Recite the rosary at any gathering of people. Well, this is an occasion where... I was very happy to relay this information about this apparition in Rushev. It's one that I knew about before, but I did not realize its significance until I started looking at it to create this video. And often this occurs while I'm doing research, I'm also learning myself. And I hope that what I provided would be of interest and a learning for everyone that can listen to this video. 
So thank you all for joining. And as always, God bless. Please like and subscribe. It helps us produce this content and helps us get it out to other viewers. Again, thank you.